Yeah, you know how he goes oh, yeah. to the ground? <laughs> yeah, the dog totally licked my lens right now. You know, things happen on location. Always bring a microfiber cloth. It is so much easier to take a great picture when you're in an amazing location. I think anyone, even my grandma, could take a nice picture in a nice location with her cell phone. But when you're in a location like this, where everything's dead, or let's say you're shooting a client and you're in a crappy location, how do you get good images? Tell me, really, I need help. No, I'm kidding. Actually, so I'm here with Julie, and she's a Chicago model. She's pretty well known here in Chicago. She's gonna be working with me today. I am gonna try to make the best out of this dead location. Literally dead, everything's dead. This dead park, and I'm gonna try to get, try to get good images here. And this is probably one of the most important videos that I could make on my channel because when I do photo walks, people always struggle to try to find a good composition when you're in a crappy environment. And I'm gonna show you guys how I would do it here in this dead environment. Shooting with the Nikon Z6 and 105 millimeter f1.4. So obviously I'm gonna be, I'm gonna destroy the background, but that's an art in itself because the background still matters even if it's blurred out. Okay, and I'm recording it with, uh, I'm gonna recording the EVF using this recorder here. Um, I'm using a flash as well, using high speed sync to really give Julie that pop so she can just pop out of the scene. Really helps me out in this quest of finding a good picture, all right? So let's get started. So the first thing I do is, actually I did a video on this on how I find compositions um, when I'm using a lens like this, right? So the first thing I do is defocus my lens. So I'm gonna focus in front of me. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at the ground and then now focusing on, on the foreground where the model would be, I'm gonna raise my camera up and kind of like look at what the scene looks like blurry. See now I would have never like really, I can never really tell, but that actually looks pretty cool, right? I got different colors and everything looks different when it's blurred out. And I can continue to do this until I find something that looks good. And one of the biggest tricks when you're in a location that doesn't look amazing is, this is like one of the biggest tips is look at everything through like a small rectangle, like a little box, right? To the naked eye, to anyone out here, this just looks like a, a regular park. But you gotta look in little rectangles, and little, like pretend like you're looking through your lens and look at everything in small pieces and see what could look good as a background. And you see that, that boathouse over there? Now, that's just a boathouse. But with the boathouse blurred out, it actually looks kind of cool as a background. So what I'm gonna do first is have Julie stand here and use the boathouse as my background. I'm just gonna be completely blurred out, but I think it looks kind of cool. Looks a lot better than this dead stuff out here. So let's get started with that. Hey Sam, bring the light closer to me, like this in this line, right there. Yeah, now closer to her. Right there, yeah. Two, three. You see? Oh, that is nice. Oh, this, this is the balance is so nice. One, two, three. Good. Perfect again. One, two, three. I'm gonna take a couple more. Oh, that was nice. One, two, three. Hey, can you change the power to one, one, uh, one eight? <laughs> All right, so looking for my second location, focusing on the, the ground in front of me, raising my camera up and looking at what everything looks like blurred out. Believe it or not, for some reason, I can't even tell you why. These lines here, the, the fences, I, I feel like that looks good. I don't know why. Sometimes you just can't explain why something looks good. Maybe the leading lines, I don't know what it is, but it just looks good in camera. You just have to go off what looks good in your eye. And then if it doesn't look good, you, yeah, you won't know about it. <laughs> I wanna show you guys the good and bad. So it's, it's a learning experience, right? For everyone, so let's do this. All right, so I took my first test. I still see the, the saliva on my lens from the dog, but it's whatever. Right, um, the, the scene looks okay, but I took the first shot and the scene looks amazing. It's crazy how I would have never thought, but see, that's what I'm saying. You have to just try and just see if it looks good. If it doesn't, you just move on. But anyways, one, two, three. Love it. Oh, I love it. One, two, three. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. That is the face. Do that, give me that face again. Right. You know what face you did? That was great. One, two, three. Gotcha. They see me rolling. They hate 
Okay, so um, I took a walk over here and I seen this. Uh... Please help me, guys. What is this? I know. I just know it's red. Okay, this red bush. Red bush. <laughs> so, it's red, and the reason why I like it is because when it's blurred out, it might give me, you know, it gives me some color in the background. If I want to back up just a tad, right there. One, two. Good. One, two, three. Hold on. Nailed it. One, two, three. Let me see. Better. Boom. Let me take a look. Okay, so after taking the shots here by this red bush, um, one thing that I can tell you is that shooting at f1.4 wide open, these are very thin strands of bush. <laughs> All I do is win, 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 no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did I even say it like that? But when you shoot at f1.4, what happens is it's way too blurry. <laughs> so what I did was I stopped down to 2.8 and it looked a lot better. I had to compensate by increasing the flash power to full power, but I think it looked a lot better with less depth of field. So you gotta make those decisions when you're on location yourself. Okay, so for my last composition, I was having, having a hard time, I'm not gonna lie. But one thing I did like when I was looking through my lens, defocusing my background was how these, okay guys, ready for a sound bite, Field of Hay, is that good? Field of Hay? <laughs> you know, I tried. Looks really good when the sun is hitting it, right? Because it saturates the colors. If I go on the other side and shoot backlit, you're not gonna get the rich colors from this Field of Hay. So to get the colors out of this Field of Hay, we want the model to be right here with that as the background, but the thing is that she's now is in the, in the direct path of the sun. I could shoot this direct sun, but it's still not the greatest flattering light. So what I'm gonna do is get the, get the soft box and I'm gonna block the sun. So this is gonna be kind of a tighter portrait. I'm gonna block the sun with the soft box. See, the soft box will be like right up here. And then I will, creating, I will be creating the light on her while still having that great color in the background. So we're gonna try that right now. One, two, three, good. Love it. Okay, ready? One, two. Three. Keep keep posing. I got you. Okay, one, two, three. Good. I love the headache pose. One, two, three. I love. Yep. Do that again. Do that again. Good. Ooh, that was good. What do you guys think of the photos? Obviously, making the best out of nothing here. It's so easy to be an armchair photographer. You're over there judging me. I know you're judging me. You're over there judging me saying, oh, you would have done this, I would have done that. Manny didn't do this right. Well, you know what it's like to be on location and things are a little different. You know, it's cold, there's pressure here. I've got, you know, like, guys, I, I, I'm doing my best here. But I think that the point and the message that I'm trying to get across is it's very important, right? Yeah. Those little techniques on how to find composition when there isn't anything just there obvious to shoot. These are the kind of things that we have to look for when we're actually on location and we're in a bad, bad area or we're running out of ideas, right? Doesn't help usually when working with a model, it puts a lot more pressure on you to find something. And you know what that's like. But um, if you go back to these basic skills, use those techniques to your advantage, okay? Um, thank you, Julie, for coming along. Thank you. Thank you for being a trooper, because I know it was kind of chilly out here. All right, everyone, later.